Here I want to go over bullet trajectory and kind of a little bit of understanding f about this, even though many factors come into play. I'm going to touch on a couple of them just so you get an idea of factors that might influence how a bullet may travel. So first off, trajectory is the path of a bullet from the barrel to the point it hits the target. Due to simple physics, the path will be a parabola. It's going to be curved. Even though we like to think about it in a straight line, it's actually curved. To what degree it's curved uh, depends on a couple of factors. So we have something called line of sight and line of departure. We kind of have this example here where we're looking at a target and a bullet being fired. Now the line of sight is a, is a straight line that represented by the alignment of the front and rear sights of the firearm. So this line of sight is a straight line. The line of departure is also a straight line, but this kind of runs down the center of the bore of the firearm. And what we're looking at, or a comparison of how that bullet's actually going to travel, is here's the parabolic path that that bullet traveled. So even though it was fired here and ends up here, and this is the line of sight, in this case it did have a parabolic path. Um, so it's important to take into consideration the distance between where the bullet's leaving the barrel and impacting the target. That's one factor to consider. We also have these internal factors that influence the bullet trajectory. So the projectile velocity, most important factor affecting the trajectory path. How quick is that bullet going? How quick is it spinning? What's the angle of fire? Are also things to take into consideration. And we could see here, given things equal, changing the speed at that, that bullet travels vastly impacts the distance, having them all being fired at the same angle in this example. Now, external factors that affect, that influence bullet trajectory are gravity, drag, and wind force. So for comparison here, we could see how all fire at the same angle. We could have some different um, trajectories, uh, and we could see some very different distances here. So these are trajectories of three objects thrown at the same angle. Uh, the black object doesn't experience any form of drag and moves along parabola. So this shows the extreme example that if there was no external factors kind of influencing, no drag, I should say, this is how far it would travel. And then we can see here is an example of the blue and the green showing the impact of these potential drag factors and how they can vastly decrease the distance. Um, so again, there's also wind force to consider, and we kind of see air resistance, no air resistance, target height, um, so all these kind of factors play into the final trajectory of that bullet. Then we have projectile drop. So the effect of gravity and projectile in flight is often referred to as projectile drop or bullet drop. It's important to understand the effect of gravity when zeroing the sight of components of a gun. To plan for a projectile drop and compensate properly, it's important to understand the projectile travels in a parabolic shape. So I tried to show this kind of water here, uh, coming out of a water pump, going up and coming down. So when we're looking at trying to estimate where the shooter may have been, if we have the end point and we have the gun to kind of match up the sights, we have to keep in mind that that bullet is traveling in a parabolic shape. This is an extreme case here. Now the projectile uh, drop graph, just as kind of putting the kind of visual to that, here's a typical trajectory graph for an M4 carbide rifle using cartridges, and we could see that there's two different ones utilized. They're all fired at the same point and the same angle, but we could see very differences here. So both trajectories are identical uh, at, tw at 25 meters, uh, and the difference in muzzle velocity of projectiles gradually causes the significant changes. So this is where knowing the caliber, knowing the propellant that was used, can again help offer some suggestions here as far as how far it may travel. In short distances, it may not have as great of, of a change, but over long distances for sure, that change will be definitely um, potentially seen in a much greater degree. Now gravity also influences, so a dropping bullet uh, at the same time as the height firing can estimate the rate of drop. So here's one that's being dropped, here's one that's rolling off a counter, and we can see they both impact at the same time. So gravity is the same influence um, here, whether it's traveling in a line or just being simply dropped of, in a vertical pattern. So ballistics table, so it's a tool at which uh, predicts the trajectory of a projectile that's used to compensate for physical effects in order to increase the probability uh, of the projectile reaching the intended target. So these are just some basic tables for looking at the wind table, how that might impact things, the drop table, um, depending on how far you're shooting, depending on velocity, depending on temperature, air pressure, muzzle velocity. Again, a lot of factors to take into consideration. I'm um, just kind of going over the basics here.
could kind of give you that kind of real basic kind of form here, the ideal projectile motion in different angles. As I said, angle has a large play in that. So again, this just kind of gives this kind of example of how we have different angles being fired um, and looking at different timestamps. Um, so these trajectories or projectiles launch at different elevation angles uh, in a speed of 10 meters per second. A vacuum and uniform downward gravity field is assumed, so we take those factors out. And you can see here, just in general, t uh, little t's time from launch, big t's time of flight, r's range, h is the highest point of trajectory. That kind of gives you this kind of ex explanation of what these numbers here on this graph mean. The points are at um, 0 0.5 second intervals, and the length of their tails is literally proportional to the speed to, again, help visualize what's going on when bullets are fired at different angles. We also have drag resistance, and this is a mathematical model such as computation fluid dynamics are used for estimating the effects of drag. It can get very complicated. I just want you to that drag resistance is a factor to take into consideration. Empirical measures often uh, offer the most reliable method of determining flight trajectories. You don't have to get super, super specific, but just realize that the drag on the particular bullet needs to be taken into consideration because it is a factor that's influencing where that bullet is ultimately impacting the target.